shocker. Yet again, it seems like we are faced with another bait and switch from the Federal Reserve as the markets anticipated much more hawkish discussion going on with the minutes that were just released today. In contrast to that, it looked a lot more dovish. It looked like the Federal Reserve is going to be approaching the interest rate hikes with a much more measured approach despite the media blitz that they did again, like they always do, to try and get the markets to brace for impact so that it accepts the real minutes, the real discussion, the real information as a lot more dovish and markets rally as a result. So today we are going to look at what they said and what that means for the Federal Reserve's balance sheet and interest rate hikes moving forward. Ready? Let's dive in. Before we start, number one, join me on Locals where I talk about things that I cannot talk about on YouTube. And number two, join me in Dallas. I'm speaking at an event there on March 5th. I would love to see you there. If you can join, sign up link is in the description below. All right, so the FOMC meeting minutes were just released and it looks like an approach by the Federal Reserve over the next year is going to stick with kind of status quo. They are not accelerating the pace at which they're planning on raising rates, at least right now, and they are not planning on changing anything regarding their balance sheet other than you know what we already know about so the plan currently is and it looks like it still will be moving forward that by march they will no longer be purchasing assets on their balance sheet that means if nothing else changes this will be moving sideways it'll go up and down a little bit from week to week but it would be moving sideways what that means mechanically what that means what's going on inside on the actual balance sheet is that they're still buying bonds because remember a bond is is just debt and debt matures. And so if they've got two-year treasuries, 10-year treasuries, mortgage-backed securities, anything that matures, what has to happen there is that has to be replaced. And so when the federal government has to pay the Federal Reserve back for you know a two-year bond that just matured, if the Federal Reserve does nothing and just accepts back that cash payment and the federal government then has to go borrow in order to uh, pay that back because that's what they do. They don't actually pay back from taxes or income. They pay back by borrowing more. So if the federal government has to do that, it would have a much, higher, uh, uh, a much stronger force on pushing up interest rates rates of new treasuries and then the Federal Reserve's balance sheet would start drifting lower and lower. So if the goal is to keep the balance sheet the same, the Federal Reserve has to buy back exactly what matures. And so any uh, any debt at that uh, with that plan in place, any debt from the federal government that the Federal Reserve owns would uh, would essentially be uh, number one, uh, constantly replaced so the federal government wouldn't have to uh, be worried about getting that debt replaced, borrowing it from the free market. Number two, it's essentially interest-free. I've talked about this before, but the Federal Reserve sweeps all profits back to the Treasury. So any interest that the Treasury has to pay to the Fed most of it gets swept back after the Fed's expenses. So that's the first part of their plan. They will stop buying assets and they won't start selling assets yet by March. The step two of their plan is what they're going to do with interest rates and they will start to raise rates. At this point, it looks like they will raise rates by one uh, rate hike, which is 25 basis points. That's a quarter of a percent. They said if inflation persists and if inflation continues to grow and get stronger and doesn't doesn't they, it doesn't look like they're having any impact on inflation, then they will reevaluate the data as it comes in. So if we get 8%, 8.5%, 9% over the next couple of months, then at that point, then they might raise rates by, uh, you know, uh, 50 basis points at a time. Maybe they might uh, raise rates by even more than that. Who knows? But at this point, they're saying, hey, we're going to take a measured approach. And so we're not going to do anything crazy. Like, uh, you know, we sent Bullard out to do all, all the uh, press conferences, talk to the news outlets to make, get the markets to brace for impact. We're not actually going to do any of that. Right now, we're sticking with a uh, quarter of a percent at a time. And we'll do it until we see an impact on inflation. And if we see inflation not responding at all, then we might dial up our, uh, our our efforts there. Now, the third thing that they talked about is being a, a lot more aggressive with selling assets off of their balance sheet. At this point, it looks like they want to significantly reduce the size of their balance sheet, and they might start by uh, really just selling off the uh, mortgage-backed securities from their balance sheet, holding most of the treasuries. This makes sense because housing has gotten really hot. They want to put a damper on inflation. 
having interest rates go up as a result of mortgages go up as a result of them selling the mortgage backed securities might have a significant impact on that. And then they wouldn't have to worry about any impact to the federal government because they're continually rolling over all of that debt, the six or seven trillion or so that they're holding of uh, federal government debt that uh, they get, keep on rolling over and is interest free to the federal government because all that interest is swept back to the treasury. And the final thing that I'd like to know about all of this is the fact that We've seen this take place before. We've seen what happens when the Federal Reserve swallows a financial bomb and then tries to slowly spit it back up on the economy. In the wake of the financial crisis, they swallowed a financial risk bomb. And then over the next five, six, seven years, they continually tried to slowly spit that back out into the economy as they thought they continued to see growth and that the economy had the strength to handle it. And in 2018, the market started to fall apart and the Federal Reserve had to stop. And then nine months later in September of 2019, markets broke again and the Federal Reserve had to reverse course and start not Q QE, QE infinity. We're going to see the same thing again because the bomb they swallowed this time was much larger. There is a lot of deflation that they've swallowed up. And as they start to spit that deflation back out onto the markets to fight the inflation, it's going to start to break things. It's going to start to crash things. And at that point, depending on where that pain level is, they'll have no choice but to reverse course. It's a matter of when, not a matter of if. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. You guys have a great day.